What's your favourite moment with the alien in Alien? Uh, I think it has to be when it just pops out and just goes, Bleh! It's just, it's so funny. That's, it's, it's, you know, unstoppable killing machine. Just surprises people the same way people surprise like one-year-olds. Blair. Alien is a film carried by amazing cinematography, direction and acting, all working in tandem to make a guy in a rubber alien suit seem like the most terrifying thing in the entire world. Weirdly, while you would think that the person wearing the restrictive rubber alien suit would be the most uncomfortable person on set, it was actually the people wearing spacesuits. So before we get onto that, yeah. the alien itself... Yes. It's a guy in a suit. Yeah, it's a guy in a rubber suit for almost every single scene. I think there's a few things done with puppetry, but almost every other like scene starring the alien is literally just a guy in a rubber suit doing his damnest to make that thing scary. And there are a couple of scenes where you can tell that the alien is a guy in a suit. Um, we've mentioned it before, but we'll mention it again because the scene is hilarious. It's like the deleted moment where the alien crab walks away from somebody. And you can very clearly tell it's like a guy wearing a dumb rubber suit and blah, 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 blah. And they cut that out because it just made the alien seem less scary because it's, it draws you out of the fact it's an alien. It's just Zoidberg. Yeah, it's, it's just Zoid, when, like, when you have, well, do you know what? Put the deleted scene in, but with the Zoidberg audio over it because that's how stupid it looks like without it anyway. So who was the guy wearing the suit? Uh, that was a Nigerian student called Balahi Badeho. And I'm hoping I got that right, because this dude's fucking awesome. The alien is his only acting credit ever. He wasn't an actor. The story goes, he's just a really fucking tall guy. A member of the production crew bumped into in a pub and went, oh, he could be an alien, all right. Let's get him in. Because prior to casting, Badeo, am I getting that right? I'm really sorry. I really struggle with names sometimes. What's, what's your take on it? Balahi Badejo? I don't know. What, what did he reside on? Uh, just, it was five minutes ago. <laughs> God damn it. You've okay. got it written in front of you. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm saying, but what would you pronounce the pronunciation? Balahi Badejo? Do you want to have a look? look? No. We'll stick with it. We'll commit. We'll commit. Okay. We've committed now. Balahi Badejo. Prior to casting Badejo, um, various people considered for the role were like Peter Mayhew, you know, the guy who played Chewbacca, and circus level contortionist, but none of them could just get, like, you know, the movement quite right. Because like, the reason they've got Mayhew in first, obviously, tall guy, oh, he's too bulky. Like, he's, he's too bulky to play the suit. Like, we can't get the suit to fit him. Contortionist, obviously, can fit inside the suit, but they just don't have the same presence as someone of like, Mayhew's height. And they were like, well, how do we get someone who has combined both of these elements? And they found their answer in Badeo, because in addition to being very, very tall, he was also very thin giving him almost inhuman proportions when he's in costume, which helps better sell him as something not of this earth. And I think there are only a few production stills of this guy still to exist, but you can tell that even when he just stood up next to people, he's fucking ginormous and it's terrifying. And it just helps you just like imagine that the thing you're seeing on screen isn't a guy in a costume, this is an alien. And obviously that's combined with like, you know, the acting, the direction, and like the cinematography of the scenes. It's one of the things I fucking love about and the alien, is that they gave it a similar appearance to the parts of the ship, which allows it to hide and pretend to be things like, you know, pipes. Because I think it was the moment, obviously, where someone goes into, like, the engine room, and there's, like, a pipe, and it's, no, no, it's not a pipe, it's the alien. And the alien, obviously, comes out and eats the guy, and I love that shit. There's also the famous bit with uh, Ripley at the end, where she's, in, obviously, I think it's in, is the escape pod she's yes, in? Yes, little And she's, she's looking around, she hears something. And it's like disguised amongst the parts of the ship yep. that are visible. And obviously, yep. yeah, that, that, and, uh, that's yeah, the scare. That goes down to like the biomechanical origins, like you know, um, H.R. Giger, the guy who did the original design of the alien, was going for. So it's like it's a combination between like, you know, the mechanical and the biological, hence the term biomechanical he used to describe it. And there's a few like aspects of the alien design I really like that have been expanded upon in like um, various pieces of other media. And one of them is, like, it was answered in all films, like Alien Covenant, you know, that really shitty film nobody likes. Yeah. But that establishes that. Do you know the weird ridges like, on the alien's back? They're actually like flexible, and that's how the alien can like crawl through pipes and stuff. Because there's like a brief shot where you see the alien chasing somebody, and it crawls into a pipe, and you see the spikes on its back like basically contort to allow it to squeeze through. Because the alien does look a bit awkward and clumsy when you just see some of the various designs for it, like those huge things protruding out of its back. It's like, how does it move around with these? Oh, that explains it. 
they can move them. Just force itself. Yeah, they can, so and that makes them even more terrifying. And I love that shit. One can get into here. Well, of course they could. Aliens can get anywhere. They can crawl on the ceilings and everything. Like all the games where you get to play as the alien generally give you the ability to just crawl on walls. And that is like one of the things you have. Like, it says in a direct fight with someone who's got a gun, one bullet will put you down unless you're like a big beefy alien. But at the same time, you're a fucking alien, man. Why would you attack someone head on? That's not the way we do things. Sneak up behind everyone, work the shadows. Like the famous moment in Aliens, where the alien's getting closer. Where are they? Oh, they're all in the ceilings. If I was an alien, I'd just cut my hand and just throw blood at everybody. Well, they do do that. They are aware of the fact their blood is acidic. That's what they do in Alien Resurrection. All right. Where they all basically work as a unit and decide, okay, which alien drew the short straw? Which one gets to die today? And they kill it to spray its blood away. And then the queen does it as well where she allows the aliens to um, attack her so its blood will melt through its restraints and it escapes that way. So yeah, they are acutely aware of the fact their blood can be weaponized. Like in Alien vs. Predator again, where the alien gets its tail cut off and it sprays the alien at the Predator. I've watched a lot of these movies, but I fucking know about the... I, I know me some alien facts. So if this was just some random guy they picked up in a pub... Literally, yes. Like, why did they assume he'd be better than, say, a contortionist at the role? Like, was there a particular thing he did? Not initially, no. He was, he was cast purely because of his, his height command, his thinness, which I obviously said, it's going to make him look inhuman in the suit. Even though he wasn't an actor, but they were still committed to playing the best alien he could. And he went for this performance that like, was not what the producers expected, but they ended up loving, where he slowed down his movements. Um, he's what he describes like a mantis-like performance, where he like, very slowly moves his arms to make the alien appear less like a mindless killing machine, which the producers ended up fucking loving because it elevated the alien from this mindless killing machine to a ruthless and calculating monster that was stalking its prey. Yeah, because there's a difference between a huge creature leaping at somebody and screaming yeah. than there is about a creature slowly stalking them in the dark, yes. waiting for the right moment to jump out. Like that, That's a hunter. Yeah, so what uh, Badeo did is he slowed down his movements and he's like, he, you can see that when he's playing it in the few like, opportunities you get to see it just move without attacking. You see it moves its hands very slowly and very deliberately to give the idea that the alien is just, it's constantly calculating. And there's another aspect of the alien design that I think um, plays into that. And that's something that was handed down by Giga himself when he was designing the creature. Initially, and I'm not sure if you have to find the early production stills of this, and the design of the alien skull had a human skull inside of it through which you could see two empty eye holes. And Giga went, I don't like that. I'm going to remove it. And he said, just give it like, you know, the black carapace you can't see through and um, visible in virtually every iteration of the alien scene in film so far. And his idea behind that was that it's scarier if you don't know it's looking at you. Yeah. You don't know where the alien's looking. And to my knowledge, they never firmly establish how aliens see the world, except for in Alien 3, where they have like a stylized representation, like a big fisheye lens, it runs. And I think they even went as far as to say, this isn't how the alien sees. This is just like, you know, a cinematic interpretation of how we think it might. Isn't that a neat little detail that like you probably never noticed since I just mentioned it? Yeah, because I guess, like, I, I can picture it. It's obviously got, it's got the mouth. Yes, it has, the, like, what we would understand to be a face, yeah. but it doesn't have eyes. And doesn't that make it scarier? Because obviously... Well, it does in, now. In, yeah, I mean, in <laughs> horror, mystery is always scarier than knowing. Like, if you yeah. don't understand what the thing that's trying to kill you is, it automatically makes it scarier, which is why I think the alien is probably one of the scariest things, like, in fiction, because it lives exclusively in the dark. Unless you're watching Alien Covenant, where it's just like headbutting a fucking windscreen in broad daylight. Oh man, the alien in that movie is such a fucking idiot. Have you watched it? Uh, a long time. Like, the alien in that movie willingly just crawls over just an exhaust port on a spaceship and burns itself horribly. <laughs> they have a throwaway line. Like I said, I'm going to burn this motherfucker, and he like activates like the the thrusters to burn it. But the alien itself just crawls into it. It's like, why would you do this? Why what is would, fire? It's so stupid. <laughs> Just like, oh yeah, the most terrifying thing is the thing you know nothing about. Let's make two movies explaining where it comes from. Oh, what? People don't like that. Who fucking would have figured that? I think I may have mentioned this before, but when you talk about mystery and horror films, yes. I'm a huge advocate of exactly that. Like, you should not show the thing that is stalking people or never, yeah. the, until the end. You can show it, but never explain it. Yeah. If you like. If you don't explain it, your mind will fill in the gaps. And generally, with most people, the thing they think up will be this, what's scariest to them. And obviously, once you explain it, you take that away, and it lessens the impact. And uh, 
I'm always, I'm a big advocate as well, like terrible CGI fucking monsters ruin horror movies, which is why I'm a big part of practical effects. And I think the um, It came out recently, uh, contained a lot of practical effects. I think the one that blows people's mind the most and they realise is um, when It crawls out of a cupboard or a wardrobe, I forget the exact scene, but that's a practical effect. And my personal favourite is the film Wreck. Right. You ever seen this? Uh, no, but I think you have mentioned right. it. Right, Wreck is a film I highly recommend people go watch. I think it's Spanish or something like that. It's yeah. um, And they made a shot-for-shot shot remake of the film called Quarantine, which sucks ass. Because I think the fact that like, you don't understand what the people are saying half the time makes it scarier. And throughout the film, you never find out exactly what's going on until the second film where they tell you, oh, no, um, it's a religious thing and it's a demon. And it's like, oh, cool. Okay, thanks. Great. And <laughs> she fucking ruins the film. It's so stupid. But anyway, and at the end of the film, they have the creature reveal. And like the alien, it is a practical effect played by a very tall, very thin man called Javier Botet. Or Bote, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, I apologise. And he suffers from Marfan syndrome, which gives him really long arms and giant hands, which just give him like the eight, like it's this gaunt, unnatural, inhuman appearance that like, he has decided to monetize by just playing movie villains and monsters in movies. You know what? Play the hand you dealt, fucking respect to the guy. If you just put the clip in, like, it's so terrifying. It's like Badeo, he realized that it's all in the physicality of what I'm doing. And he just played, and you can, he just, oh, it's, I can't describe it, wait, he's just combined with the sound, like this, just this guttural moaning of just this giant, like, long limb creature, just like, you know, just walking through an environment is the most terrifying fucking thing in the world. Because it, because you, in your head, you go, well, that's not CGI. How the fuck did they do this? What is this thing? I can't explain it, and that's terrifying. Yeah, there's obvious exceptions, like we mentioned it. Yes. And the fact that you see, it, the, yes. the, the, the it at the start but then he's still creepy because you don't know what he's doing you don't know his reasons and also you can take other forms as well yeah not to mention as well, I think the, the addition of the practical effects to accomplish like you know some of yeah. the scary so things they do something to be material just helps yeah as well. because it's a tangible object on the in the shot the actors can react to it it just makes everything just that bit more genuine and it also it holds up better it's the same with it follows as well. Like you can see the thing, but it can take any form, and it's yeah. always there. Like if it's you've either got to keep that mystery alive. If the thing yeah. is, also as well, they never explain what it is. Yeah. They, you just know that it follows. It just, it just, it just does, does a thing. thing. Now, is there a greater moment in a film though, or a horror film at least, when they just walk out of the house and there's just a naked guy on the roof? <laughs> it's, it's just so good. I'm not sure we can put that in. Put a little a little fact fiend logo over his knob when you put the shot in. But it's just like when they leave the house and there's just a guy on the roof. It's like, oh man. Yeah. That's terrifying. But you know what? That's a fucking villain. But there's so, so many good shots now. Like the one where they're in, just in the bedroom and then there's a girl in the doorway and then this just huge lumbering thing just appears in the shadows. Yeah, yeah. All the, just all the shot where they're just having a conversation in the window behind them. Yeah. You just see someone walking to it. And obviously you notice it about five minutes before the characters do and it's so fucking tense. Like, they do it in every shot. Yeah, every single shot has somebody walking towards the and camera. And it's so fucking terrifying. It's the same with, uh, in the background of the new It, when there's people who, there's like an old woman in one in the library scene who just stares at the camera. And it's so eerie, because you're like, stop looking at me. But she's just there. But no, no, big, dumb CGI monster. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, to combine that with big, dumb CGI monster. Yeah, it's so scary. So scary. Fuck you, horror movie makers, man. <laughs> Surely wearing a skin-tight rubber suit when you're a tall man is not going to be particularly comfortable. Uh, it wasn't, and it's noted that the suit, when Badeo first tried it on, didn't fit properly. Um, although he never complained once, which earned him the nickname The Quiet Man on set. But <laughs> even also creepy. Yeah, even as uncomfortable as it was, it didn't even compare to how uncomfortable the spacesuits were. So what was wrong with the spacesuits? Well, for a start, they initially didn't contain any sort of cooling system, which uh, doesn't sound ideal and gets even worse when I point out that they were filming Alien during a heat wave. So, yeah. And these two things, you think, well, that's bad, but it's not terrible. It's uncomfortable, but it's not like, you know, dangerous or life-threatening as long as you get lots of fluids and take it off. Again. So I should point out as well, the suits also had no venting system which meant that when the actors put the helmet on and it basically just became like hermetically sealed and they were at full risk of just collapsing from carbon dioxide poisoning and dying. So the limited amount of oxygen. Yes. So they have to take the helmet off after every take, I yeah. imagine. Yeah. And obviously, and also as well, there was no cooling. So they were constantly sweating. And what do you do when you sweat and you're hot? You breathe more and then you panic and then you pass out and you die. 
Well, that didn't happen, but that was, that was what was, all the actors who wore them were fully at risk of doing. But at this point, there might be someone out there thinking, well, these are actors. They signed on to do this. They knew the risks. Um, which, which I'd like to count by saying, well, um, Ridley Scott's kids didn't, and neither did the kids of a random cameraman. You're probably wondering what I'm talking about here. Well, um, do you know the space jockey shot? Do you know where they walk up and they find the space jockey? The, the, that famous shot, this giant fucking alien, yeah. and they're observing it. Um, well, Ridley Scott didn't think that set looked impressive or imposing enough when the actors like, you know, were walking around it. So what he did is oh. rather than... You know what's going on, I did, but I need to explain it, is rather than redesign the entire set, he had smaller versions of those spacesuits made that didn't have cooling or venting in them, put his own two sons and then the son of one of the cameramen into those suits and then, then made them walk around the set to make the space jockey look bigger. And do you want to guess what happened to these kids? They, I imagine they had a pretty bad time. They did, yes, and I believe one of them passed out. And obviously Ridley Scott realised, I'm like, oh, fuck, this is probably a bad idea. And he said, okay, I'm going to get a nurse on set who has oxygen. And then the prop makers also went, oh, fuck, and then put a cooling and venting system into the suit for future shots. Is it worse if the one who passed out was his own son? Or it was the other oh, guy's yeah. son? I don't know. I don't think they got credited either. No. It's like it's an uncredited cameo type thing where... He just did it for like two or three shots just to make the thing look a bit bigger. But it's <laughs> the father, yeah, yeah, these actors all signed on. Did your fucking kids know? He's like, oh, do you want to come to work with dad today? Do you want to see a movie get made? Put this uncomfortable as all ball suit on and walk around sweating your own bollock juices and then pass out. So yeah, um, contrary to what you might expect, given that, you know, the alien suit has been worn by like you know, a seven foot tall man and it didn't fit, it was less uncomfortable than the space suits worn by everyone else. Because at least the alien suit didn't nearly fucking kill the guy wearing it. Oh, God, movies are dumb. Speaking of being filmed while being warm as balls, I think we're going through like a mini heat wave at the moment. And this air conditioning is doing its fucking job. I'm still a bit warm, so let's remove this shirt for a while and advertise this lovely product people can buy in our merch store. But also, let's talk about other behind-the-scenes nonsense that happens. Because it's... It's so common, isn't it? Like it, It's here. less common nowadays. Yes. Because obviously there's a lot more regulations in place. Not to mention like, actors are a lot smarter about how they get their contracts written. But, but like you hear stories from like the 70s and 80s or earlier that are like horror stories. Not even that, it's just, here's, I had to do something super dangerous and the director didn't give a shit. Um, I think like James Cameron is notorious for this. And I think it's the set of Abyss where an actress complained like, oh, I really need the bathroom. And rather than obviously, because if she has to go to the bathroom, you have to take the costume off. She had to, you know, go to the bathroom, come back, put the costume back on, go through hair and makeup again. And he said, no, fuck it, just piss in the water. So she had to piss herself in the water as everybody watched. But yeah, if people don't know about the making of the abyss, uh, the mo like most of the shots, I think, were filmed. Underwater. Yeah, in a giant swim pool that yes. they built. And then apparently, they, because it was, they, the, the main issue was that it was really cold. Yeah, and, all the, and also, yeah. also as well, all the actors were told to piss in it. Yeah. So they all, so also it was full of piss. But it was so cold, I think they had a hot tub built next to it yeah, to it. warm up. And people were always going, oh, it must be great working on a film. So you get to swim all day and go in a hot tub. It's like, we nearly die yeah, every day. <laughs> also as well, there was a lot of piss in that pool because James Cameron told people to piss in the pool. And that continued, right? I think Titanic is the film where he said, I don't want no films on set. And he brought a nail gun to set every day. And if someone's phone went off, he'd nail gun their phone to the fucking wall and then tell them, like, don't do that shit again. But then he did make Titanic, so you can't really argue with him, can you? <laughs> Even the biggest stars in the world weren't immune to this shit, though. It's like, James Cameron, again, Terminator 1. Arnold Schwarzenegger, then like, he's just coming off the back of, like, Conan the Barbarian. So he's, like, hot shit at the moment. James Cameron made him do all sorts of bullshit. We talked before, haven't he? Like, he poured, like, this weird acid on his coat to make it appear he was on fire. He, like, he sprayed fucking Vaseline on his face every day so he looked like he was just constantly sweating. He made him walk up and commit a crime when he, like, put punches through the window of a car because he wanted to get a good shot. <laughs> so I think if we go all the way back, though, like, before... Um, well, CG was even a thing. Yes. Even further back, etc. Like any stunt you see in a film is real. Yes. Like even the large set pieces full of like thousands of people are, are, are real. Well, they're the famous ones yeah. out there. It's uh, is it Ben Hur, where just loads of horses died. Yeah. Because they just fall over and die, and then they shoot them. And that led to obviously the creation of like you know that no animals were harmed during production thing because so many animals were just getting fucking killed to make movies. <laughs> We've done a video before about Buster Keaton. And yeah, how yeah. All of his stunts were real and incredibly dangerous. Yes. And 
he was obviously like, you know, big dick baller and just yeah. took it. But how many other, like, you know, stunt men from that era got seriously injured because they didn't know what the fuck they were doing? The safety regulations weren't there because the director wanted to get a good shot. Like, moving on to, like, modern movies, like, a lot of martial arts movies, is an unspoken rule that you are going to get punched. We've talked before about the raid, where the actors and the extras and the people in the fight scenes would just talk to each other and say, okay, you're going to get punched. Like, it's you drew the short straw, today's your turn to get punched in the face really hard. I'm sorry, but we need it for the shot. And it's just like this agreement that, you know, just take, take the hit for the shot and you get the rest of the day off. <laughs> Was there a film where one of the actors, before they filmed, said, all of you just get a chance to punch me? No, I don't. Is that not a thing? It probably is, yeah, but uh, I know in like the Rocky movies as well, where Sylvester Stallone always insisted that they like, you know, spar for real for a bit. Yeah. And it always went wrong because he was usually boxing against like huge giant men who knew how to punch. He always just got murdered. And they were knocking the one. fuck out. And then again, I think Sylvester Stallone broke his neck on the set of Expendables mm. during one scene because he's like, obviously wanted to uh, get some realism out of the other actor and said, oh no, do it for real. And just broke his neck. It's like, fuck yeah. So like working on a movie sounds like hell, doesn't it? Oh, God. Oh. What is it? It's, uh, I think even just like movies where you get to have fun, it's a lot of CGI. Like, if you think like Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds says, oh, yeah, that suit just tastes like asshole. Because <laughs> obviously you've got to wear the mask all the time. So oh, you God, he's over his mouth, yeah. You're breathing into the mask, and then obviously it goes straight into your nose. So you're just smelling your own breath all day oh. and just breathing in your own bad breath or whatever you ate for lunch for like four hours a day. Surprised he's not made a comment about that <laughs> in the film. He probably would. <laughs> As Deadpool. But oh my god, yeah. So fuck working on movies. I'm just gonna stand. Like, it's, I feel uncomfortable enough to just study it in front of like you know some studio lights, sweating my balls off. I can't imagine how much sweaty I'd be in a fucking leather rubber suit, and then being told like you know what, now being an alien for six hours. I was about to say, what's the most uncomfortable thing you think you've done for the channel? For the channel, it's got to be that fucking mask that cut my chin. <laughs> Well, it just makes you like really appreciate the actors who spend not only all the time studying from the cameras, but like the six hours doing makeup, yeah. like Nebula in all the Avengers movies. Oh, they, that took so fucking long to put on. I was in the I was in the chair from like four in the morning, and then they make me go do fight scenes for five hours, and then I come in and I can't even go home straight away and see like my family, and my kids, and shit because I've got to take it all off, and I'm just blue. <laughs> or I think the actress who played Mystique um, in the first X Men movie that it dyed her skin. And she said, obviously, she ended up swallowing so much of it during scenes, she vomited up blue. And there was one night where she was out drinking with Hugh Jackman and they did tequila and she vomited blue all over him. <laughs> <laughs> Suffering for your heart, man. People, got, you got to do it. Suffer for your heart. 